I was messing around in SketchUp, experimenting with some geometric patterns and designs that I might try and build into a box. After playing around with some hexagon based shapes, I realized that I could create not just one box, but in fact a system that would work for any hexagon based shape. Here's how it works. My name is Tyson. Welcome to Geek's Woodshop. The build system works like this. I could combine any number of hexagons in any sequence and create all the walls for the resulting form using just four shapes. As long as I can reliably cut those four shapes over and over, in theory, I could create any of these hexagon based forms. So we are going to need a reliable way to cut those shapes and I think a table saw sled would make for a good option. This doesn't need to be too big, so I cut down some plywood and squared it up as a base. It's been a while since I made a sled, so I needed to cut some runner material as well, which was cut close to width and then taken down just a hair at a time to fit perfectly in the miter gauge slots. I cut the height of the runners to be lower than the surface and then cut some cardstock into strips to raise them just above the surface. Knowing that my base was square and my fence is square, just use some super glue to set the base against the fence and on the runners, and then a few brad nails help to hold it secure while it's flipped over and countersink some screws to fully secure the runners. If it slides well enough, wax the surface, and let's work on the top. A few more strips of plywood were added to the front and back of the sled. I just made sure these pieces were straight and around 3 inches high to give plenty of blade clearance. Also be sure to not shoot any brads or place any screws in what will be the path of the blade. Now when figuring out the right angles and sequence of cuts, I thought that I'd need opposing angles on each side of the blade which works fine. Later, I realized that I might work even better if only one angle was used, which supports the work better. So consider this version one, knowing that there's a simple upgrade to version two. This particular sled will create box walls at 20 degrees. To make this work, we need a compound cut that is a combination of 11.2 degrees on the sled with a table saw blade tilted at 28 degrees. To help with this, I printed out drawings of the necessary angles and cut those out directly. And it helps to print this out on cardstock if you can so that the paper has some rigidity. And then transfer the angles directly to the sled. Then some straight edge boards were used and lined up exactly to the line. With those blocks in place, added another support wedge on top and the sled is ready. Now it's time to cut it in half. Angle the blade at 28 degrees. And this is quick work with a digital angle finder, but if needed, I also printed and cut out a 28 degree angle, which could be used as well to set the blade. Now 
Lower the blade to around an inch high and cut through the sled. As a safety measure, brightly mark the area around the blade to keep all your fingers clear. Now we can work on cutting the parts. I think it's best to cut the channel into your board before cutting it down. This is not only more efficient, but it's also really useful as a visual guide when flipping the board back fourth. Because these box walls slant at 20 degrees, that's also the angle you should use to cut the channel. Just be sure to set the blade back to 28 degrees before using the sled. As you start using the sled, write some notes down on it directly. I wish I had done this earlier, it could have helped me avoid making a lot of bad cuts. To get the cut distance set up, I again use some full scale prints to transfer a mark on the sled, then made part of a cut and compared the results. Once my test cuts matched the printout, I could mark the position and start cutting. Of the four pieces, the widest piece is the most common. It starts with the channel down and toward the bottom, then is flipped with the channel facing up and toward the top, and then repeat, which will produce a few offcuts. This process is done with each of the parts. So check the drawings frequently to make sure the sequence is right for each part. I've included a link in the description for more information and some printed guides. Now the height on the walls doesn't matter. It can be two inches or five inches high, but the cutting marks will change based on the width of the board you are using, such as a 3 8 wide board versus a half inch wide board. So I included printed drawings for both of these widths. Once all the parts were cut, I could work on the base. To create the form, I again use printed hexagons, line them up, and cut out the shape. This part is a little tricky, as the size of the hexagon you use will vary based on how deep and how high up the side wall you've cut the channel. So this may take some trial and error. Make sure and do some dry fitting using tape to test the fit before you use any glue. Using some blue tape, 
is also the best way to assemble the box when you are ready. If you have several segments taped together, you can work your way around and glue it up in stages. One, two, even this three hexagon box wasn't too difficult, but it gets tricky the more complicated the shape you choose. For this video, I completed three boxes. This simple one was supposed to be larger and I had glued up these contrasting boards, but I made a lot of bad cuts and this is all I had left. This three hexagon box was made with walnut and it came together really nicely. I'm really happy with this one. And the six hexagon box was a bit troublesome. But I had a few gaps to fill with some sawdust and glue But fixing gaps and mistakes is just part of the adventure. So, let me know what you think of these boxes in this process. Hope you'll give it a try and if you do share the experience until next time thanks for watching